for two reasons, for the opportunity to present to you guys today and to opportunity to present with a beer in my hand, which <laughs> as an administrator and educator, I hope you recognize like how rare this is. <laughs> so before we start, cheers to all of you. <laughs> Uh, I do do this at the end of the day normally, but usually at my house, right? So um, we're super excited to have an opportunity to talk to you guys today and have this opportunity. A um, couple of things, uh, we'll be introducing ourselves more specifically here in just a little bit. Um, but it, it is something, this is something we've, uh, both Ben and I have had an experience around the three principles, which we'll get into. But uh, uh, long story short, we took a class, mine was a five-day class, I think Ben's might have been a three-day class. We teach this class in about 15 hours. So what we're going to try to do is break this down to about 35 minutes as much as we can. So we recognize we can't go quite as deeply as we'd like to, but in that in that vein, just we're going to try to give you the high highlights and high points of something that's had a drastic impact on what we're Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is this is pretty cool. And to be honest with full disclosure, we we do this every day at school. <laughs> Yeah, but we should. Cheers. Uh, thank you again for having us. I'm, I'm Ben. Um, so like Mitch said, we, uh, this is about seven or eight years ago, and we had our own issues in life like we all do. And Mitch took the class, it, it changed things for him. And he shared it with me. And I took this class, and it was centered around this idea called the Three Principles, which we'll get into. We were so profoundly changed by this in the way that we saw the world around us that we decided to take it to West One. And we've taught probably some 300 teachers. And the feedback that we've gotten is that it's been pretty well received. I think it's been transformative for the teachers that we've, we've, we've taught. It's been transformative for their students. It's changed their lives. And what we want to do is we want to share it. Like Mitch said, we do use stories and analogies and song and Dance, maybe. We'll see what happens. Dance. It's possible. Um, but we do take 15 hours, and, and we are trying to condense it as best we can to 30 minutes. Um, the, the idea behind it really comes down to this essential idea of choose your thinking. And that's what we have evolved into what we call mind words. And as any teachers typically do, if you run across something that you find that is transformative for you, and we work with kids every day, okay? And this is one of those things when I first learned about it, I thought, oh my God, I would have known this when I was 14. I would have known this when I was 13. Um, it would have changed my life. I know on the trajectory of my life, it would have changed for the positive. And so for us as educators, it's like, okay, we've got to package this. This, this has such a profound impact. How do, we, how do we move forward to the next piece of it? And that's what we kind of hope to share today. But the big question is why, okay? And all of us have our stories. All of us are going to come to the table, and we're going to come to this event, and we're going to have our own experiences. Um, we all have some similar uh, traits, but we all have our differences. Um, my story, uh, this is my beautiful wife, Kelsey, but I will say she's my second wife, okay? So early on when I moved to Des Moines, I moved to Des Moines in about 2006, I moved with uh, my first wife, Kimberly, who uh, ended up going to the Des Moines University here, right down the road. And uh, unfortunately for us, uh, and for her, the first thing they said, literally the first day that they went into a, a class together as a whole group, a core head of the cohort of doctors, they said 85% of current relationships will fail. I hate to say that I'm a statistic, but I am a statistic, okay? Our marriage didn't make it through the, the stress of, of medical school, and, and here I stand. But, remember, things happen for a reason, right? So I met Kelsey um, shortly thereafter, and then my two lovely daughters, Adley and Quinn. Uh, Adley's the blonde here that looks exactly like mom. Uh, thank goodness Quinn came along, because for a while I wasn't sure if my genetics were in there at all, but now <laughs> Quinn is showing me that yes, uh, I had actually gotten their father, so that's exciting. <laughs> Um, and I say that from the standpoint of what the three principles have done for me and that concept of choose your thinking and being and kind of living in that positive world. I do it, it's, it's very personal. It has nothing to do with wanting to share, run a business, or those type of things. What I do this for is for those people right there because ultimately I want to be the best me that I can be when I move through this world. And if I'm the best me, I raise the water for the people around me. So that's, these are my big reasons as to why. <laughs> um, I can't, I just, I'm still, it's like, welcome to med school. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, of course. That's situation. funny, it's sad, and true. Uh, this is me, and um, it's no big thing, but, you know, for Mitch and I, we both had our own personal tragedies. For me, this is about eight, nine, ten years ago, and, uh, um, you know, I got to a fight with my dad, 
Uh, I could tell you what the fight was. It was dumb, it was stupid, they all are, but it wasn't the fight. It was the 30 years of, of history before that. And that escalated between a fight between me and my family. And to make a long story short, that was it. We were done. Um, for about three years, I had a, I had a hard time. I, I had a lot of difficulties about um, the relationships that I had. Uh, I had trust issues. Um, I was hurt. I was angry. And uh, I, was, I was always asking, you know, how did this happen? What's going to happen when I see them in the future? I couldn't let it go. My only salvation, to be honest with you, was actually going to work. I've got 125, 130 students every day, staff members that I come in contact with. And then I'd go home where it was just me and the cat, and then that's when it would get the loudest in my head. And no matter what I was doing, I was consumed by these thoughts that I couldn't let go. Then I took the class, the three principles, and it changed. And then all of a sudden, I saw my life, at one point, without my family, which was sad and horrible, right? I mean, all my friends, they do this Thanksgiving stuff, and I was always invited. Like, everybody kind of felt bad for me, and, and they'd invite me to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I couldn't, I couldn't go. I didn't want to be around somebody else's family when I didn't have my own. Three principles happened. And then I began to see things very differently. And I began to see, actually, how incredibly fortunate I, I was. I love this picture. By the way, her name's Kitty. <laughs> and she is awesome. And truly, one of the best Christmases I ever spent was this incredible day, December 25th. It was actually beautiful out. So I went out and I played golf. There was nobody out there. I came home, I watched TV, I watched whatever I wanted to watch. I loved it, right? And it began to change my life to such a degree because of the three principles that it actually transformed the way that I started looking at my own family. And after about 10 or 11 years, there was a reconnection. But things had changed. I saw my family differently. What I love about this picture, this is my niece, that's my nephew. I had never met them. And it was only about a year ago that I flew out to San Francisco for the very first time to see my sister that I hadn't seen in many years, and to meet my niece and nephew. And the great thing about the three principles is that it, it changed how I saw my family, and how I related. And even now, my life is so much better because of the introduction of the three principles. So you're like, okay, great. Well, what are the three principles? Here you go. <laughs> so the first time I took this class, it actually took them a full day before they actually told me what the three principles were. So I was kind of mad. I was like, well, come on. You're talking about this. You're saying three Ps. First of all, the philosophy was designed by, uh, he came up with uh, a gentleman by the name of Sid Banks. And, and he does have websites, there's books out there. He's no longer with us. I think he passed away in 2011. Um, but he is a Scottish welder. If you ever go and watch his videos, you watch just because of his accent. It's, uh, it's great. But, but he's a real smooth talker. And essentially, he's just like the rest of us. Had his issues, okay? He went and decided at one point in time that he wanted to go see a therapist. So he went in. Saw a, a therapist and probably did the whole thing that we're used to, lay on the couch, and, and the therapist asked, you know, Sid, what's, what do you got going on? And Sid kind of pontificated about all the things that were happening in his life. And the, and the therapist at the time just said, Sid, you don't have problems. You just think you do. And for whatever reason, he describes it in his own way, but he just had this enlightening moment where it was like, well, he heard that at a much deeper level than any of us did, and he actually brought forth a, a thought process, a psychology that's based on these three words of mind, thought, and consciousness. We'll dig into these a little bit more, but I, Ben and I always describe this. Like when we take we teach the class, it's almost like having to describe the word love. You know, if you had to if you had to say something about describe love, every one of us is gonna have a story, or they're gonna have a comparison. I'm gonna talk about my mom, I'm gonna talk about my wife, I'm gonna talk about somebody in my life that I love, but you can't really describe love. And it's a little bit of like the three principles. We have to talk to you in, in a series of stories, in a series of how do I relate to this? And hopefully, most people have been able to connect to it pretty quickly and able to like connect to their personal lives to say, yeah, I can do that, or oh, I can stop doing that. Well, that's the thing, we all have a story, and we can all relate to these images. Um, we all have thoughts, and sometimes our thoughts are, are so big, so profound, they do consume us. Sometimes we have so many little thoughts that just jumble up, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I think the slide that Mitch will eventually show, what the research says, is that we've got some 60 to 100,000 thoughts in a day. Again, some big, some small. 
But oftentimes, the trouble that we have is we can't let those thoughts go. And then when you add in things like social media, um, I mean, I, I love it, right? And I love looking on Facebook, and I had to, I had to write my sister a birthday message on Sunday. Um, but I was thinking, and I overthought, and I overthought about exactly what I was going to say. I didn't want to screw it up, right? Yeah. And then as I'm thinking about it, I'm scrolling on Facebook. Chad Lehman is like an oceanographer. He's scuba diving. That's his job. And I'm looking, I'm like, dude, I'm happy for Chad, but I don't know. I'd like to be doing that. So I started feeling down about it. And then I saw, well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But the thoughts that come from Facebook and the other types of social media. And then, when we have so many thoughts, all the things that we have to do, and when we can't let those thoughts go, eventually it, it weighs us down, it consumes us. My life is being beaten down because I was consumed by this thought of my family that I could not let go. And eventually what happens, we can all relate to this, it just spirals. It gets out of control. And again, the cool thing about the three principles is that you find a way that you can let those thoughts go and replace them with the kind of thoughts that you want to have. And just some personal thinking on this too, like Scott, you work with kids every day. And I don't, I, do any of you have kids right now? Okay, that's something like that. So they are bombarded every day. And being not quite developed yet, this whole concept of Facebook, Snapchat, you know, every day they're being told that they're good enough, not good enough, they have this many likes, this many friends. Their currency, their, their personal currency, I call it their ego currency, unfortunately lies in the outside world. Which we would also also like to tell you that that's not where we want to be. I too, same way, uh, can get consumed by the thinking. Um, we work in schools. I, there's been many times in, in, in the work environment. Have you ever had maybe, a, and I don't know how the structure is here, but as the building principal, if I'm just focused on, like I need to get from one end of the building in a less than a minute because there's something I have to go do, I may walk past several staff members or even students and not do the normal, hey, how are you? And the minute I do that, that person that just walked past looks at you and goes, oh my God, he's pissed. What is he mad at me? What did I, why did I say hi? Or why was he smiling? Or what, we start making up stories. Okay? We start putting things in our head that may or may not be true. Our kids are putting things in their heads every day that may or may not be true. And reading through all of that is kind of the, the hope that we're going to help demonstrate today. I don't have kids. Yeah? Do you have feelings and thoughts, though? But if you knew the struggles that I have, I, I don't. I mean, I've got 400 channels on Dish, and I, you know, freak out about what I'm going to watch. But some of you have other, like, real stressors. The thing is, there's, there's nothing that's bigger than anyone else's. It's what you really choose to make it. So even though I can't even identify with some of the things that Mitch has to do, you've got to go pick up the kids tonight. If I don't have to do those things. You create your own stress. And you make your stress what you choose to make it. You can make something very small, very big. Something very big, very small. And what's cool about the human experience is that we can all relate to those stressors, regardless of, of, of losing my family or having a divorce, we can all relate to those things. It's just depending on how big or small we want to make it. Right. Of course, my fingers failing me, so I'm going to walk over here. So here's some, here's some things, OK? And this is really, the, for me, this is one of the most powerful analogies that we ever had in terms of the ability for humans to actually make an adjustment on the spot, okay? So, take us to the intersection, okay? Um, I'm going to assume that some of you drive cars, and this is a four-way stop, okay? So, if we're in car A, we're the red car there, and we arrive first, what do we get to do first? We get to go, okay? So we arrive first, and we start our, our accelerate through the intersection, and this yellow car, car V, comes flying through the intersection. I have to slam on my brakes at that moment. That car blows through the stop sign, swerves around me, almost hits me. I probably use sign language at this point. Okay? And I also probably, I might have an emotional response. Now, we all may have very different responses here, but I would say the norm here is, our egos take over, and what happens is I start thinking several things. First thing is, uh, I get to go first. It's my turn. I got there first. You need to stop. So you broke the law. Um, you almost hit my car. It's a nice car. I like my car. My family is in my car. You could have hurt me. You could have raised my insurance rates. How quickly 
Does our ego go, duh, 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 and it creates a feeling of really anger, frustration. I might even get so frustrated, I'm happy to say I'm not in this boat, but I might get so frustrated that I decide to turn, I don't want to follow this person. I want to find out what their day is like and what they almost did to me. And so I start following that car B. And here's the beauty of the three principles. Car B turns into the emergency room at the hospital. They run out to mom. She grabs her daughter out of the back seat and runs into emergency room. Now, I'm left feeling a little bit different now. How does that change? Where did my anger go right there and why? What do you think? Empathy. Empathy. Immediately. One thought different. One more new piece of information took me from this very, very angry place to absolute empathy going, yeah. I would have ran that stop sign. I wouldn't have done that. And I stopped thinking about me. And I started to think about what their perspective might be. Now, sometimes they're jerks. <laughs> so sometimes you might have followed that person and they just were like, and they flipped you off too. <laughs> but what we're, the whole point of this intersection piece is to show you that you don't sometimes need years of therapy to change kind of inner thinking and inner thought process. Sometimes you just need one new thought. And you can change just like that. In that moment, this is just an example of I can go from anger, frustration, and whatever that might be, to very quickly that empathy, caring, love, sympathy. Um, and it can happen just that fast. This is a powerful um, aspect, one of the takeaways that we've already moved there in this case. So, the human experience that we can all relate to is this. It happens with a thought the thought that somebody has cut you off, the thought that somebody was negligent, that creates the feeling of, of anger, the action, the sign language, and eventually there is the result, positive or negative. Is that, oh, take over. All right. Um, and, and we can all relate to this. Um, you know, as, as, as a teacher, I've got students that come in. Sometimes I have students that really don't want to do the work, right? What's my thinking about that student? They're lazy. They don't want to do it. That's a negative thought. I don't have to be there. Because if that's where I'm at, that feeling is going to change about that student. The action is going to change with my relationship with the student, and I would say the result is probably going to be far more negative than it is positive. We've had that happen in our schools. We've had students where we may have assumed something, only to come to find out that in all actuality, those are kids that maybe didn't eat the night before that they have to take care of their little brothers and sisters. And when you're changing that thought, well, the feeling changes. And when you are practicing this habit, practice makes better. When you have the ability to control your thinking, when I'm aware that I have a negative thought about someone, I also know that I have the ability to change that thought and become more positive. And, and here's the thing that I learned with my experience with my family. These thoughts are not just short term. Sometimes these are long term. I had a thought about being abandoned by my family. That thought, that anger, that insecurity, well, without me even knowing, it created a feeling inside me. The action, yeah, I couldn't hang out with certain people because they were with their friends. I couldn't open up, I couldn't do things. It was a negative result. Sometimes the simplicity of coming to work and, and traffic is slow and you're thinking, oh my God, this morning in front of me, why do they have to go so slow? And there's this feeling Right? And you create this mood and you come to work and you don't know why, but it's like you might take it out on someone. And of course we all know the results that we can have. Something bad happens at work. You don't know what happens, but all of a sudden you're at home talking with your spouse, talking with your kids, and there's this feeling because the thought was a negative thought. You have the ability to change your thinking. Today, I don't know if you know this, uh, it's uh, uh, Mr. Roger Day. It is. This is as close as I get to a card. <laughs> I use this in my class. There's the quote that Mr. Rogers says. He says, um, when the bad things happen, I don't know if you know this one, when the bad things happen, his mom told him, when the bad things happen, look around. Because when you look around, you're always going to find the people there to help. In every dark situation, there is always a silver lining. In the darkest of situations, there is always a silver lining. But it's an amazing thing how we choose not to find those silver linings. We focus on the bad things. We don't have to. In the worst of situations, we can choose to focus on the positive. And if we create that habit, life, at least for us, is going to be so much better. This is the guy, Sidney Banks. 
And he says, many people make the mistake of believing that their moods create their thoughts. In reality, it is their thoughts that produce their moods. There were some people on Monday morning that may have woke up, they may not have been in the best mood. And without realizing it, they may have been thinking, oh my god, it's cold, oh my god, today's gonna suck, it's snowing, it's icy, traffic's gonna be horrible. I just read actually that in Norway, they're some of the happiest people in the wintertime. Because of the way they choose to think about the winter, about the snow. They embrace it. They love days like this. And the only difference between those that love days like this and those that don't love days like this is the way that people choose to think about days like this. That's every day. And we want to be clear, too. We recognize that we're kind of talking about the negative stuff. But like, I, I feel like we all have kind of those painful moments in our life. You know, my father also passed away of kidney liver cancer. He drank and smoked and had those issues. We all have those moments in our life that cause us to go a little bit lower. But I, I, I argue at the same time, we also have those people in our life that tend to have the positive thinking around things. And I know that once I took the class and once I started to surround myself with more people that had the understanding, I don't know what it was, but it was like I wanted to hang out with those people like all the time. And now you look back and say, well, yeah, it's a lot more fun <laughs> to hang with people that are in that positive mindset than it is that people are in the negative. I also want to talk about the goal of the class for us is some people are, are very emotional. Like, I'd argue that like, I, I actually wasn't the person in the car that would actually turn and follow you, okay? I, I, I don't have that kind of emotional response. And a lot of times, but we've had people in the class that say, oh, that's absolutely right up. And the question for me is like, does the emotional response that you give, does it really fit the bill? Is it worth that much energy to input that much negativity to physically follow that car to see what might happen? And I'd argue no. With the understanding of three principles, I guess, if I used to live a life that was more like this, with highs and lows, I'm much more like this, okay? Because I know where my feelings are coming from. It has to come from me. It has to start with a thought. So these are kind of the big takeaways that our class, that our, that our teachers have actually told us is, this is what I walked away with. And the first thing is that Sid says, if you can quiet the storm in your head, happiness is actually the false setting. And we'll, we'll go through a little bit of an exercise, because we all start at the same place. We all started in, in, in we were all born somewhere. And we really started in a blank format, okay? Everything that comes after that creates our belief system, creates us well out. We demonstrated number two at the intersection. You really can't change this in an instant. The beauty of this is you don't really need years and years of so many uh, therapists or that kind of thing. You can literally make that change right now. And it's totally within your control. Um, some of these other ones are big ones for kids. What others think of you is their business. And it really can't hurt you. Other people can think whatever they want about you. It's you who has to decide if you let that impact you. Positivity. I love, I love remember the Seinfeld when um, George's dad has everybody should wear a name tag. Hello, Joe. Everybody would be saying hi to each other. Like, for fun, go to the store tonight on your way home, whatever, smile and say hello to people. I mean, wouldn't that be crazy if you did that, if we all did that? But the reason why we don't is because we're afraid of how they're going to respond to us. That's totally their business. That has nothing to do with you. And when kids hear that, it's, it's powerful. It's amazing when they can get up and give a speech when they don't really care now what anybody thinks about them because they can't control anybody else's thinking. And this last one's probably the biggest piece of it. Like, we, we have a, a friend, his name's Tony Wilson, he talks about we all have a degree from MSU, and that is make stuff up, okay? We are so good at making up other people's stories for us, like whether they like us, whether they don't like us. We have, a, we have an internal monologue going all the time. You do right now. You might not like my best. I kind of like my best, okay? It's, 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 it is warm, I'll be honest with you there. But we all make things up as we go through our, our experience. I always, I always use, we always use the example of, like, as a building principal, if I send the message, see me in my office, send it off to the teacher, how do you think that goes over most times? You know, you get that email, most people are immediately are like, they never jump to, I think you've done such a nice job, I'm going to start paying you a million dollars a year. I don't know why they don't jump to that conclusion more often, but most of them always go with that negative route and anxiety, the thought. I do? What did I say? What parent called? What student did I interact with? Spiral, spiral, spiral. Sid would tell you, relax. 
go to the office. Don't put the energy in places that it doesn't need to be. Get to the office. Find out if there's something that you need to put your energy into, and then let your wisdom take over. You'll know what to do in the moment that I say. And if I do say you get paid a million dollars, go high five and go out. But if I do say, oh, there's an issue you've got to deal with, your wisdom will take over at that moment, rather than dealing with things that are made up and spiraling in your head. What? Are the three P's. So this is kind of fun. <laughs> There's life right after. Yeah. Mind this is going to have an answer to it later on. Yeah. Though. This will be an analogy later on. Mind, thought, and consciousness. So what is mind? Mind is the energy of, of life. However you want to look at that. It is, it is the simplicity of energy. And there is all kinds of energy. There's positive energy. There's negative energy. All kinds. What we love to do... Will you participate with us, everybody? This will be the only uncomfortable awkward moment we have to have. Can we, promise? Can we touch you? Can we? Can we? Can we hold hands? Can we hold hands with your hands? Can we? Can we hold hands with your hands? Can we? Can we hold hands with your hands? This is an energy ball, right? I don't know if you've ever played this game before, right? Now somebody to disconnect. Let go right there. You just let go. Oh, go ahead and touch me. Anyone? Somebody else. Yeah. Now I'm gonna start to do it. I know it's like I'm gonna try. That's kind of fun. Okay. Thank you. Awkward moment over. Awkward moment over. But that's but that's but that's the energy that we're talking about. And so the energy begins, and when you have the energy of life, well then, thought and consciousness is, is really completes the process of the beauty of energy. Yeah. But the concept here is like, energy is just the, it's, it's, it's the, it's the energy mind. So mind is energy. A lot of people confuse. It's not the brain. It's not brain matter. It's nothing physical. It's just the energy. It's knowing the difference between something that's alive and something that's not alive. The squirrel in the road versus the squirrel that's climbing in a tree. There's something about us that we just know. We know the difference between those two things. If you're a Star Wars fan, I am. <laughs> the force may be with you. The force is everywhere. It surrounds us. It binds us. It's a similar concept there, okay? And I don't know how they how good I knew about it, but uh, that it, it's more of an energy source, okay? Now, the next word is thought. And uh, we do have, Ben mentioned this earlier, like we have 60 to 100,000 thoughts a day. And the way that works for us, for most of us, is like a lot of those thoughts aren't, we're not conscious of. It might be just blink, it might be breathe, it might be, um, I don't know. Some of those are more conscious than others. But what we like to describe, we use the analogy of the river. So if you can imagine that all these thoughts are going through your head, and imagine it's a river going through one ear and out the other, um, the problem with this river is that that river comes right back around and comes right back in over here, okay? And my example that I'm going to give here is that these thoughts are rushing past you. We're aware of some of them, some of them are But some of them, we're really aware of. We reach into the river, we grab onto it, we hold it, and we squeeze it really tight. Okay? When I was going through my divorce, you know, at, at night when I laid down, the things I grabbed into the river were, why am I not good enough? What happened? What did she see in that guy? What, you know, where did we go wrong? What did I do? I, I started thinking about, oh, you know, placing blame on myself and trying to figure out and solve all these types of things. In the end, it might not have anything to do with me. It might, and it might have, I'm sure it did, don't get me wrong. I'm not, not, mm. yes. <laughs> but my point is, there was def there's always things in every one of our lives that we reach in, and it, it caused me to die. I, I did lose weight. That was the nice uh, feature of that. Like, you know, I didn't want to eat. I lost, I lost the appetite. I just, you know, I was so hanging on to this thought that it just, it changed my world, okay? And what, what 3P has done for me, it, it made me first of all realize what the heck were the things that I was reaching in the river and hanging on to and grabbing on to. And then it gave me the freedom to go like to throw it back in the river. And as I told you, we're human. That river goes right back up one ear and it comes right back in. I grabbed onto it the next day. <laughs> Had the same horrible feeling, same same old horrible thought. What I got better at, because it's a practice, I didn't hold on to it quite as long this time. It came around again. Didn't hold on to it even shorter amount of time. Pretty soon that thought came through again and I'm like, you know what? I don't need to put my energy there. I know there's nothing I can do. I can't change anything about that particular thought right now. I know how it makes me feel. I'm moving on. Quite honestly, I'm going to grab into something else. You know, my new relationship or something positive that's in my family. You know, something that's there that I know is going to create that positive outlook for me. 
And it's hard, because life is hard. Okay? And we're not up here saying that we can just woo, make magic happen. We can't, but with just a little bit of awareness, and that next word is really the awareness, we think that you can change your world drastically. This is the cool part, is that when you are aware of how you are thinking, you can <coughs> choose to change it. You're aware of a negative thought. Great, replace it with a positive thought. Now, it's not quite as easy as that. Yeah, we should say that. I mean, it takes practice. I mean, for me, and, and, and just like Mitch, I was so consumed by this thought of my, my family that when I learned about the three principles, I was like, okay, I'm thinking about my family. Let it go. Which I did. And, and I started thinking about, you know, the, the, the world around me and what I could see and being present. And then two seconds later, the thought came right back. But I caught it. And the more I was able to catch it and throw it back into the river, the easier it became for me to control what I was choosing to think. Um, if I, if we, uh, uh, if we, can you actually use the, can you do the, the click thing? I can do the click thing. We love using this quote in our class. Life is what's happening while you're busy making other plans. Here's another fun activity. When you're driving home tonight, like, see if you are present <laughs> when you're driving home. How many times have we driven someplace and we don't even know how we've gotten there? Because we're so consumed with our thoughts. And I can tell you that every single day, if I choose, I can take the negative thoughts from school, and I can take that with me, and I can take that home with me. And I haven't left work at home until I learned about the three principles. And now, I actually, I actually took a, a page from an instructor that we took the class from, where when I leave school, still junior high school, corner of, of Grand and Vine, as soon as I cross, cross Grand, that's my reminder. It's time to let it go. You're done with school. Be done. Let it go. And then five minutes down the road, I'll start thinking about something stupid I said to a colleague or a student. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Let it go. And then down the road, it just becomes easier and easier and easier to catch your thoughts and become aware of your thinking. But we've all been there. Whether we're watching a movie, whether we're watching TV, whether we're hanging out with our kids, you're not fully present. One of the stories we love to share, we actually had somebody take this, took this class who shared with us that she had an infant daughter. And I think there was something wrong with, with the way that, that maybe she was walking or something like that. So well, she wasn't even walking. That's kind of a funny story. So she's on she WebMD. She had symptoms. So she was looking at the symptoms. Right. Web because of her thinking. And she had all these anxieties about what could be wrong with her daughter. And she was so consumed with trying to figure out what it was when she was on WebMD, just out of the corner of her eye, she saw for the first time that her infant daughter was beginning to walk. But she almost missed it. Because life is what's happening while you're busy making other plans. And all too often, we forget to be present with our loved ones because we're in a different place. I've got students who are in class, they're not in class. Until, actually, we start using the idea of the three principles, that has been a profound change for our kids. And, and for, yeah, for me, it was a uh, four-year-old and one-and-a-half-year-old, and a uh, wife that works at, she's a juvenile court officer, we have our own like worlds that we, we come back to. But for me, I'm just as guilty of this. These darn things are the devil. I mean, and I love it. I'm a, I'm a scroll, I'm a Facebook looker, I have Pinterest, I do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, don't judge. Um, and, uh, but I, I'll find myself <laughs> and my, my daughters, the, the true wisdom of the world. When my one and a half year old daughter comes over to me, she goes and pushes my hand out that had my phone in. You want to talk about like a reminder to be there, not there. Um, that's a, that was one for me that I still get cracked up about. Like, I can't believe that I put her in that boat as a one and a half girl that she has to, like, go, Dad, mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, consciousness, so where was this teacup? So, again, to, like, you're going to go home tonight and be like, what was your cool after uh, work thing today? And you're like, I don't know, I have a lot of wine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I hope that you can try to ex explain some things, but in these three things, this is a quick analogy, it's like a teacup. So the mind would be represented by the water. The heat of the water, the energy of the water, whatever it is, because we should get boiling and we can pour that in. Thought would represent the tea bag that we're putting into that water. Okay, so you know, we'd argue that positive thoughts or a positive tea bag is going to make the water taste our consciousness better. Okay, if we, if, we, if we find ourselves putting a lot of the negativity in, our, my guess is that tea is going to taste awful. Okay, so it's kind of an analogy of the three things working in combination and how they support each other. 
Um, there's also the VCR. I, I, it's, I can't, does anybody know what VCR is anymore? Uh, but the concept of plugging it into the energy, putting the movie in, whether it's a happy movie, a horror movie, or a drama, or a sci-fi movie, and what the consciousness is kind of what plays on the screen and how it makes you feel. Okay, so there's several analogies. My thought is I'm anxious. I know it's, it's we, we we're only 30 minutes, and I know, so I want to, I, I don't need to rush things, and I don't need to take your time, but we only have a little bit more. The, the cool thing is about this is we play this game in our class. If, if we were to describe a, a baby being swaddled for the very first time, um, we ask the people to describe that, and people say innocent and, and pure, and that's really where we all come from, right? We are without any form. We are without any thought. And then all of a sudden, we are introduced to different things. We have belief systems about what it means to have a, a job, what it means to have a family, and a belief system about what a spouse is, what a spouse should do. Um, uh, a belief system about... Um, this one. We this love this. This one. Right. Thanks, come and go. Where does this <laughs> I'm from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We say pop. It's a belief system. And the cool thing about a belief system, if you want to click the button real quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Now, how, what was your emotional response? I want you to gauge that. Like, when you see this one, does it send you through the roof? I don't know. Well, what this is is an example of ego. We are taught certain belief systems, and we are taught that our way is the right way. And the cool thing is that when we understand where we all come from, we all come from that same place. We're all innocent. It, it begins to have a greater understanding of what empathy is. I still, uh, you know, I do current events every day in my 8th grade social studies class. I still go back to Charlottesville, I think it was two years ago. And we're talking about people who are racist, right? And when we understand that we don't know somebody else's story, we don't know their story, we don't know where they come from. If you understand their homes, if you understand what people are taught, Oprah says empathy, you don't excuse bad behavior, it simply explains it. That way you can have an understanding. And it goes right back to traffic. Somebody cuts us off, we know. We know exactly why they cut us off. It's their fault. It's exactly. Okay. I didn't know. We know that when a colleague says something and they are kind of standoffish, they're kind of abrupt, oh, I know why they're saying that. But maybe I don't know their entire story. And when we have the opportunity to choose to think the thoughts that we want to have, we can choose to think with empathy. So we've already talked about a few of those things. But kind of what we want to go to, so we do have a Facebook page, so it's, it, it is MindWorks. And the fun part about our class is that you know, we work with a lot of teachers who also go on Pinterest. And so they'll bring things to our table all the time. And you know, this, this concept, that our wisest philosophers have said this for years, you must be more present than some. And it's so true though. And I didn't really get it until I, I learned about the three principles and what I do to myself. You know, we, we, it doesn't break down to as simple as living in the past causes depression or anxiety is the worry of the future. It, it, it does in a, in a large sense that, but being present, being in the moment, Sid would tell you, you can plan for any outcome. You can have five different plans. I, I used liking this when I was in high school, and I liked that girl. I had every conversation that we could possibly have laid out in my head. If she says this, I will say this. It'll be really cool. And if she says this, I will do this. And I, I spent a lot of time, and then I, when she said something, I looked at her and said, uh, hi. You know, in the present moment, if you're more present and with the people that are around you, you, you tend to, to live a, a little healthier space. These are just fun memes that then our teachers have shared with us. And I, I, I get a kick out of it. But it's so true. You know, I've got 99 problems and, you know, 86 of them are blue man snares and then stress it off for absolutely no logical reason. This one's a fun one for us. Okay? He asks the girl if you want to dance, and look, look what she does. Hold hands, get married, have babies, now life sucks, then cheated on me, and she just says, no. <laughs> a little case of overthinking. We don't know what our outcome is. Your thinking creates a reality. Yeah. Uh, I love this, right? Um, we all know who this is, I hope. Mm -hmm. Elaine, thank goodness. Um, eighth okay, who can do the best, Elaine? Eighth, eighth graders don't get that. But when you understand your thinking, it, it, is, it is liberating. 
It is liberating to think about how, when you are thinking what other people might be thinking, how that imprisons you. The ability to, to dance like, like no one is watching you. And we love to ask this question in our class, how many of you can dance? How many of you can sing? And we get a few hands. Everybody can dance. Everybody can sing. The reason why we don't do it is because so, we're so worried about what other people are thinking. You don't have to be worried about what they are thinking. You get to choose the thoughts that you are going to have. So, what now? And, and, and I don't know. I, first off, I just got to tell you. <laughs> I love Congo. <laughs> <laughs> So do I. Uh, and we'd love to have us back. We do, we do the trainings in our class. But, I mean, you don't need us to do it. We actually have a page where we have resources where you can look at this on your own. Yep. Um, because what we're doing is we want to share this. I mean, it truly it's changes gift. the way you're going to see the life around you, which is awesome. But I really do believe that it does begin with intention. You want to lose weight, you want to be healthy, it begins with intention. You actually have to go to the gym. You actually have to eat right. I'm still looking for that pill that allows me not to do that, but that's what's up. <laughs> you want to be happy? It begins with intention, and you really do have to work at it. It's really not that hard. We do things in our class. Sleep. I mean, how many of us really do get eight hours of sleep a night? Wonderful. I, I struggle with it, but I, there's a practice, and there's a way that we get to, to talking to our, our classes about it, focusing on what we're grateful for. There's a great current event about the happiness class at, at Yale, where like one of the things that they have to do is write down every day at least three things that we're grateful for because you're changing the way that you're thinking about the world. I love this one in our class. We actually take a nature walk. And again, I would encourage you that when you're going home and do it safely, of course, but be aware of what your thinking is. The cool thing about a nature walk is there are so many things around you that will bring you right back to present, which is, I think, where we all want to be. Uh, Again, just to, in the, when the change moment happens, or if it does happen for you, or just being more present, like I said, I notice, I just notice beauty a little bit more. I'm just more aware of my surroundings. And the fun thing with the traffic piece, but I did have somebody cut me off one day. Like, totally, they blew whatever stop sign came in front of me. And my new response was literally, I pulled up, you know how that moment where they stopped the stop sign, and I thought, hey, I knew you were going to pull next to them. You know, what do you do? You look at them, and it's like, how dare you? You know, but I pulled up next to that guy. And I, I, could, I could tell you, so he knew he did what he did. And he looked at me like this, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> and he immediately, like, woo, a smile came across his face, and he did back to me. He went, <laughs> <laughs> and that could have been so different. It could have been that angry moment. The reason he didn't want to look at me, you know, and why? Why do we, why do we have to have that high level emotion, those sort of things? So, and mindfulness in the business world is definitely something where, where we have. And, you know, you guys have a slogan. Where and means more. And we argue with the three principles of the understanding your work is going to be more mindful, you're going to have more happiness, and obviously, from the business world, that leads to more productivity. It does. If I like my coworkers and I can get along with them better and we have an understanding together, honestly, with the three principles in the class, it's, uh, they use a youth justice mission for offending youth. And what they do is they bring the parents and the kids together. They teach them the language of the three principles, which is part of our class. And when they do that, then they can go home and they can say, they talk about being on the porch or being in the yard, depending on where their anger and their moods are. Parents learn how to communicate with their kids for the first time ever and kind of have an understanding of where they're coming from. It's beautiful. So we had to throw this in too. So. We don't. That was, that was my idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is our website if, if you're at all interested in anything that we, I mean, look, we, we, we love sharing this. And we love that you have bot questions. That's what we love most of all, is when people like aren't getting it and they're, we want those questions. I mean, we, we love that challenge because we really do believe that mind, thought, and consciousness, being aware of those things and aware of your thinking can, can really change the world it, simply by how you choose to look at it. And really the reason why the class is 15 hours normally is like we want to be interactive right. because each of you have beautiful stories to share and a lot of you that's have you have impacts and that type of thing. And so be able to throw those out in the middle. Awesome. And and I've had we've had parents, we've had other teachers, and you start talking about just your stresses of being in a marriage and how hard that is. And and it, it's just refreshing to start remembering and reminding ourselves that hey. What's important? What what I really need to give energy to? 
you want to do. So mindworksforme.com, it is a website. It's got several podcasts. So if it's something that you're interested in listening or you want to share with someone else, we encourage you. We're done. We do have <laughs> totally done. really cool videos over nine minutes, but we're not going to show it because it's, but it's awesome. So yeah. Oh, and we've got oh yeah, and here's the thing too, like we don't really know what we're doing. So if you find the time in the next whenever, if you want to fill this out for us and, and give us your honest feedback. If you're yeah. horrible, we'd love to know why. And, Oops, we, we won't be next just time. to be clear, we haven't made a dime in our world, and it's not about that. It, I mean, well, okay, it is a little bit earlier, really but ultimately, right now, you guys were the first time we presented in like a forty-five, twenty-minute window, um, and it's it's not easy. It's not easy, but at the same time, we're trying to get better, and we do want to get out to the corporate world because this is it's a beautiful secret, and, and the more that we can share it, the more we can get out there and get out there and get into. It. Right, so the way the class is set up is what the principles are, then we do a day about relationships so, and how we think about the relationships that we have. And then that last day is all the actually work world. the work world and how we discuss our relationship with our work. So any feedback is great, we love that. So yeah, if you take that survey and keep that reference sheet for us, if you have our business card, you've got all three. Melissa's in the back, we have to, I have to acknowledge yes. Melissa. Too. Melissa, thank you so much. You know, we're two dudes and she <laughs> kind of is the reins of the operation. So, um, I don't know about that. She, thank she's you, She's come along with us and she's also our drawing band. Um, and of course, Emily, thank you again. Yes. And thank you all so, so very much. We have, I love this. This is awesome. For sharing the end of the day with us.